Hi everyone, it's Cindy. It is Tuesday, it is June 28th, and I'm back for an update. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you're returning, thank you so much. I'm gonna be sharing with you what I've been working on uh, since last month. I do my videos at the last week of every month, if you're new to my channel, and I'm gonna be showing you what I've been working on didn't get as much as I had anticipated, but it is that time of year where I'm out and about. Uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, Grandpa did go home last night. My son uh, landed last night and they are back home. Uh, Going to be getting back into my routine. Grandpa is a lot of work. I'll show you his picture here. He is a cutie. He is a lot of work though. I walked him three times a day. And not a five minute walk. Uh, he has a lot of energy. So I'm going to be getting back into my own routine and get back to doing all the things I love. I really did treat him like a kid. <laughs> so I gave him the best visit he could. So on to what I've been working. Not as, like I said, not as much as I wanted to, but I did get the June wordplay done. Now, I've been doing these every month. Uh, if you're new, I've been stitching one every month, and I get it done uh, before the month starts. Now, this is June. Let you take a look at that. I definitely changed some of the colors. I made it brighter and more vibrant. And up in here, I definitely added strawberries. So I changed it around a little bit, and I typically do on these. I do love it. It is bright and cheery. Got the uh, white eyelet by Lady Dot, and I just did like a red color to match uh, the strawberries. And I'm going to show you the other months, and I'll let you know which one is my favorite so far. Uh, this is May. Definitely change colors. Yeah, I can change colors on all of them pretty much. Uh, so I did make it to my own liking. Did Rick back there, and that is the back. This is April, and I love the colors in this. Nice and springy. That is the back of that one. If you've seen them before, I know I show them every month, but hey, you can never see these too much. There is March, and I added some buttons up there. That's the green eyelet. That is the back. It's February. This has a heart rick rack, rack with rick rack. <laughs> Say that ten times. <laughs> and there's the back of that. And this is January. And I think out of all of them so far, I think January is my favorite. I just love it. There you go. That's the back. So that's um, on par. I did start working on July, but I got so little progress, I'm not going to show it. And that will be done before July starts. I do have a couple of days left, and I'll definitely get that done. And these sit up on my mantle. So that was uh, the first thing I worked on. The next thing now, to my sister Cheryl, if you're watching, please stop. And just go ahead about three or four minutes. I don't want you to see. Okay, let's get that out of the way. So I have the keeper of the pins, and I know everybody's been working on this with a needle and thread. And her birthday's coming up in July. Now my sister is a big quilter. She doesn't cross stitch, but she quilts and she does other projects. So I did stitch. My soul is fed with needle and thread. And I didn't get to finish it. This is a um, picture that's plus on 36 count. I love this fabric. Uh, so I do want to try and get some sawdust, but I might have a problem sourcing that. So I don't know yet, but I know how I want to finish it. Now, whether that comes to fruition or not, we will see. And I will definitely on my next video let you know how that turned out. <laughs> so I did work on that. And the next piece, uh, Gather Blessings. This is my monthly piece I've been working on. Uh, me and my sister, I gave this as a gift to my sister, and we're stitching a block each month. And there 
is July. I did the house blue and I made the star there red. So it's hard to believe, but I have seven blocks done. I know, where is this year going? I don't know, time? Time is in a speed warp, but I do really like it. And I'm trying to, you know, stay on top of these projects. All right, the next project that I worked on is Spring at Hulk Run Hollow. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know I've been stitching this for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they won't even talk about my slowness on this. But I did finish block 11, so I only have one more block, and I am super excited that it's almost done. And I'm going to show you, let's see if we can get in close for there is block number 11 with the swings, the cats, and let's see, I don't know how, it's, it's so big and I can't see what you're seeing, but it is a beautiful piece and I, I'm super excited, it's almost done, one more block and I'm done. I don't know which, there's a lot of blocks in here that are my favorite, but I'll show you. I can't pick one, I, I could pick two though. I love the lamb and the rainbow. I just love that block. And this one, you wouldn't think this one, but I love this block. It says peas and seeds and I love the colors in it. They're all beautiful. Let's see if we can manage. There you go. You can see pretty much it's hard to. <laughs> this piece is bigger than me. <laughs> and then it just fell down. So one more block and I should have that done. Hopefully next month. No promises because I am out and about a lot this time of year. Next piece now, I'm doing hand embroidery and I made this template and there's a block for every day in the month. Now I'm not a stickler, like I have to stitch this block on this day. I do make sure that the month is done and I did get June done. And I'm gonna explain some, some of these blocks. This piece, will probably be hands down one of my favorite pieces and it's not cross stitch. And it is because I am designing it my first, it's my own ideas, it's not coming from anywhere else but me. So it's the creativity part that I really love. And this, that is the month of June. And every day you just stitch whatever you want in the block. So, now the template has 31 blocks. Now June only has 30 days, right? So on the last block, what I did, since this is, I'm gonna do from June to June, I'm doing a whole year. We'll see if I stick with this. I'm gonna try, but I really enjoy the project. So, so in that last block, I just put 2022 for the year. And I'm gonna explain some of the blocks. It could be whatever you want in the block. I'm just doing it for me, this is my daily, I call it my daily stitch. And certain things means certain things to me. Now, our June 23rd is my youngest daughter, Alyssa's birthday. Uh, she's actually in Alaska right now. It's hard to keep tabs on her. She's always all over the place. She loves the outdoors. Uh, she loves camping and hiking and rock climbing and all that other good stuff. So for her, on that block, I did a tent and I did a star. And if you've been following me for a while, she took pictures of the Northern Lights and they were absolutely breathtaking. She has a really good camera and a really good eye. So that was her block to commemorate her. This block right here, June 17th is 
my younger sister Carol's birthday and she loves purple. Purple is her favorite color. And I did that to commemorate her birthday now. My younger sister doesn't talk to me or my older sister. She doesn't talk to either one of us and she does have breast cancer and we've reached out to her. I've sent her several letters and cards and no response. So I know I did everything I can, but I still love her. She's my sister. And that that's to commemorate her birthday and pray for her. Pray for um, her healing in her body. Uh, now, a lot of people won't know what this is, but this right here is the simple for the Appalachian Trail. Now, everybody knows I started hiking last year and oh, it's, it's just so much fun. And there's people that do a through hike on the Appalachian Trail. It is over 2,000 miles. It starts in Georgia and it ends in Maine, Katata, Maine. Or if you do southbound, it's Katata, Maine, all the way down to Georgia. And it's over 2,000 miles of trail and hiking. And there's people that hike that on a journey. And I'm gonna put a couple links of, um, I do follow a couple of people every year who hike the Appalachian Trail and they share their journey. And it is a journey, what they have to endure, weather, animals, food, rain, all that good stuff. And one guy who hikes hiking it right now is called Jay Wanders Out. He's an amazing filmer and he's filming his journey uh, there's another one, he's called The Healthy Gamer, and he already finished the Appalachian Trail several weeks ago. He, he's doing a Triple Crown, he's on the PCT, which is called the Pacific Crest Trail, and that's another uh, on the West Coast. Um, very, <laughs> it could, <laughs> it's from Mexico all the way up to Canada. It's another one, um, beautiful, oh, that one has a lot of scenery, although, Appalachian Trail does too. Now I have no desire to hike the whole Appalachian Trail. I've hiked certain trails on the Appalachian Trail. I love it. I would love to section hike it one day, but I have no desire to do the whole thing. I could not eat the junk food that they have to eat on that trail the whole time they're on it. I, my body just couldn't handle the food. So that is the symbol of the Appalachian Trail. And I'll include a photo right here of their symbols, so that that's why I stitched that. Um, some other things are just random. Um, I did a peace sign. Can't we all use just a little more peace? Do you remember that song? All we are saying, give peace a chance. Every time I see that symbol, I think of that song. That was John Lennon. <laughs> I did an eye, uh, just some circles and just some oddities, you know, just whatever you want. I got a big, of course, a big sun right there. You can see the sun. It is, it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it um, if you're interested in doing that. Uh, those are just some of the pieces in there and, and what they mean to me. Now this one I know the symbol is it represents Jesus I'm sure a lot of people have that fish you see it on cars and things like that so I did stitch that and I like that so that that's just June and I'll be working on July next month like I said it is a really fun project um, I really like it. So I hope in, and I do stick with it. <laughs> so you never know. Sometimes, you know, things come in and they go and they go out. And that's just the way it is sometimes. Now, everybody knows, reminder, July 1st is the postmark for the uh, Christmas in July. Um, I'm going to show you a sneak peek in a minute. I do want to tell you uh, a story. A couple weeks ago, I had to go and get my car serviced. Now my car is a 2018 and it 
that's only got 21,000 miles on it. I really don't drive it a lot. So I had to get the oil changed, you know, the filter, tire rotation. And I go to the same place. I've been going probably a couple of years. And I go in and, you know, they take your car and all this. And there was always a young man working there. And he, he was super nice. He always used to talk to me and tell me stories and all kinds of good things. And the last, last time I went in, I guess I didn't even ask to think of him, but this time I'm like, hey, you know, where's that guy that works at, and I'm not good with names, where's that guy that worked over there, you know, the young guy? And she goes, oh, Will? I go, yeah, is that his name? And she goes, oh, he passed away. I'm like, why? He was young. He was, I'm going to try, <laughs> not cry. Don't want to cry. Um, he was the same age as my youngest daughter, Alyssa. And I'm like, are you sure it's the right guy, you know, with the dark hair? He had a sister in Colorado. He would tell me he moved his sister from Colorado, from Tennessee. And he would, he would just tell me stories. He was just not an ordinary, like, who walks into a service center and, you know, really likes somebody in that center? I mean, it's just not my enough. But he was that nice. And she goes, oh, Cindy, she goes, he passed away in January of 2021 on his motorcycle and I was just like you got to be kidding me she goes she goes he didn't do anything wrong he was just and it, it's usually always somebody else hitting the biker and I was <laughs> in the service I cry I'm like okay I'm gonna take a break I'm going outside call me when my car is done and when I came back to the cashier to pay they had uh, photos of him hold on I don't want to cry on screen. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to cry on screen. Um, he was just the nicest young man. Seriously. And it, it affected me. It still bothers me. Like, I didn't know him. Per like, you know, it's not like somebody really close. But I did want to say that young man left. He lived a good life. If he made an impression on me, just going in to get my car service, he had to have affected so many people. And of course, the women are, you know, telling me what happened in the accident, and um, you know, they're crying. I'm like, I'm, so, I felt so bad. And meanwhile, he passed away like a year and a half ago, and I didn't. I only go like once a year. I don't drive my car that much. Um, and they, they said, oh, don't worry about it. And they, you know, they had the pictures and. Um, the, the man that hit him had two little kids in his truck, and those little kids were not wearing seatbelts, and those little kids died that day too. So three people, three kids, lost their lives because one man did not care. Uh, it, <sighs> so, Will, <laughs> if you're watching... You lived a good life. He was young, he was so young. The, young, the age of my youngest daughter, it's still hard for me to talk about, but I do my videos to touch one person, just one. I don't ask for money. I'm not trying to sell a million things. I, I literally get two to three emails every day asking me to promote their products on my videos and I don't want my channel to be that I'm just sharing a hobby and it's just one hobby I have gardening I have hiking I love cooking there's a lot of things I like and I don't want my channel to be a channel where they're selling stuff on the on the whole YouTube that's not what my video is about and I just want you all to know out there you matter you count your life matters if you touch just one one person and everybody's it is a, listen if your eyes are open you can feel it you know what's going on there's a lot of people hurting right now I live by myself I don't listen <laughs> I live by myself too I get it but you still matter you could say hello to somebody in the grocery store you could say hello to somebody in a post office or your service station um, you matter. I want you to know that you matter. And I hosted this ornament issue. One second. 
I hosted the ornament issue not to get the recognition. I wanted to bring a bunch of people together to share their talent that cannot attend these retreats. Some people have physical issues. It's a monetary issue. Things are outrageous. <laughs> Every day something's going up in price. And listen, a lot of these retreats, you go for a weekend, it could easily cost you more than $1,000. And there's a lot of us that just don't have that disposable income. Now, I'm going to give you a sneak peek. And I'm giving a shout out. The person uh, that signed up first for the exchange was Teresa Albert. And Teresa, I know you. <laughs> You signed up first and I got your ornament for you were the first ornament I got. Now if that isn't dedication. Now I've received almost half of the ornaments. So I know in the next week or two I'm gonna get bombarded with the rest of the ornaments because July 1st is only a couple of days away. And I'm gonna show you what she stitched. Listen, every, as much work as it is for me, I get to open these packages every day. So it feels like Christmas, right? When you're opening something. So it is amazing. And now this is Heartstring Santa Factory September. She stitched it on vintage country mocha. And she said it was either 18 or 20 count Ada. Wait till you see how cute this is. Teresa, it's a, listen, they're all cute. I want them all. <laughs> Look how beautiful that Santa is. And these, these new, I mean, it's, Teresa, you did an awesome job. And there is the back and the side. So that is a sneak peek of all of the ornaments. I'll be showing I'll be doing a special video uh, in a couple weeks. Once I get them all, I'm going to film all of the ornaments I receive. Then I'm going to pack them up and ship them out. And that'll be work too. But I do have a system when they come in. I pack them in. Like I have a, a whole system down. Um, you have to be really careful and keep track of everything. You don't want to mix anything up. But on that note, everybody, I am attaching an update of the garden. The garden is awesome. And I showed you the garden 11 days ago and the garden this morning and the amount that it grew uh, in just 11 days is amazing. All of the sunflowers are starting to bloom. You'll see all of that. Uh, the garden is just amazing. It's one of my favorite things to do uh, during this time of year. I love the garden. It's exploded and it's fun to watch and it's been, it's been hot. It's, the weather's brutal, but where I placed my vegetable garden it doesn't get full sun all day long, so the sun is not beating on it. The, the sun is extremely strong. Uh, it's very hot. Like, we're all going through the, the weather thing. So you'll see those updates. Um, you know, Grandpa went home. I'll miss him. Parts of me will miss him. Parts of me won't. Um, it's a lot of work, but I love him. He's a good dog, and, you know, he's back with his daddy. <laughs> And on that note, everybody, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with the special ornament issue. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Get, that, get out there, have some fun. And until we meet again, everyone, happy stitching. Hi, everybody. It's Saturday. It is June 18th, and I'm going to do a garden update. This is my mailbox, and these are perennials. They come back every year, and as you can see, they're blooming. Look at how pretty they are. Look at this beauty. Tons and tons. So pretty. And these are starting to come back. They're on their second growth. And uh, that is the mailbox. I'm going to do the left side of my planter. Here's the left planter. In here I have uh, zinnias growing and four sunflowers. Look at them. They're pretty. Uh, they won't be super tall. When you plant in bunches, they grow smaller. If you plant one, it grows huge, but I want it to be a little bit smaller. And as you can see, the zinnias are coming up. They're going to bloom soon. There's one. And I'm going to take you down to the front garden. Now here is the front garden. Uh, not much is really being grown in the front garden. The uh, 
neighbor's cat is using it as a kitty litter and it's <laughs> I'm just gonna leave those words aside <laughs> uh, so I've just been planting a little bit at a time but these daisies grow on this big planter I planted these from seed this is a perennial they come back every year and look at there's just so many blooming it's really pretty and I'm very happy they came in this year uh, over here I do have a couple of sunflowers growing now. They weren't dug out. Uh, so we got one going back there. I have stuff growing in the pot that I just planted the other day. Here's another big sunflower. And here's, this is huge. These sunflowers grow right by <laughs> the feeder. <laughs> Kind of hidden in there and shade and love it they're big they'll be big because there's only two of them and down all the way to the right i'm going to show you the other planter this is primrose and it grows almost like a big bush let's see if we can get in there you go and there's a ton of them blooming it's actually you could see it's really big <laughs> and i'm going to take you over to the left side of the carport on the left side of the carport here, inside the carport, I have this mini greenhouse, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. Now, you could grow anything in any type of container. Uh, I'm growing greens in here, and this container is actually a kiwi container. It's free from the fruit I bought. I am propagating rosemary over here. I got my basil growing. And I'm planting some more sunflowers uh, in here. As you can see, one already bloomed. This container was a strawberry container and growing more greens. Uh, down here, we have Swiss chard and other greens growing in there. And more lettuce growing in there. I do eat salad from my garden every day. In this left planter, of course, I have my blanket flowers. They're exploding, and I planted one big uh, sunflower here, and it looks beautiful. And I'm going to take you in front of the end of the drive. Next to the blanket flowers, I have this little space, and I always plant flowers in here. And I have different varieties of sunflowers growing. Look how pretty they are. These are dwarf sunflowers, and we have other varieties growing right next to look. Look, that baby, they'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so sunflowers are doing good. In this planter, I have my, um, sorry about the shadow here, but it is in the morning. I got my butterfly bush. I got sunflower in there and some zinnias. So definitely look at, let me see if I could get a better shot of the, there you go, the butterfly bush. So that's looking good. And if I got a planter here, I got a couple of sunflowers, of course, in here. I put sunflowers everywhere. I get. I think everybody knows I love them. I got some zinnias growing in here, and I just planted a whole bunch of uh, different basil here. I do succession planting, so it does change out. There's the back of the blanket flowers and the sunflower. Got a plant here. I just planted um, some chives and some more basil and I got a little baby sunflower going there. I did have uh, something growing that I ate it all and it, it is gone now. That is kale. You can see there's a little bit left there. This is the Rosa Sharon. It's getting big. Got some red leaf lettuce in that container. Got some sunflowers and zinnias in this container. Look at this. Look at this sunflower. And this is called a dwarf sunflower. It almost looks like a Christmas tree. It's so pretty. Got another sunflower growing back there. Got some sunflowers in this pot. Salvia is uh, definitely blooming again. more sunflowers. Oh, look at how pretty are the colors on these. 
These are cone flowers. They come back every year. Got a little marigold in there. This guy is, re he's the, I don't know if he's the, he's the biggest one so far. He's way taller than me. Uh, that'll be blooming soon. Other sunflowers growing in there, other marigolds. And I'm gonna show you the garden here. All right, so you got all of the tomato plants growing. They got flowers on them now. Uh, in between them, I planted basil the other day, so basil will be coming up soon. Got some more flowers growing in here. And this row, the cucumbers, I had to replant them again. I don't know why the first seedlings didn't bloom, but they're starting to bloom, these cucumbers. And I got uh, more lettuce growing back there. The eggplants are growing bigger. The cabbage, the bugs got to that, so I had to pull it. And I'm okay with that. I don't spray anything in my gardens. And I just planted uh, more eggplants. And I'll show you those in a minute. In here, we got all marigolds. And you can see it's got little blooms on it. The towers, I ate pretty much the whole first growing. But I planted other things. And I still have some basil and lettuce growing in here. Um, as you can see, you got the little seeds starting to sprout. Um, up in here, let's see if we could get in close. I got some baby bok choy. I'm excited for that. I went to buy bok choy in the supermarket, and one baby bok choy was $3. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll pass on that. I'll grow my own. Uh, so we still have things growing in the towers, but this is uh, now the second planting. Still got lots of beautiful basil and some lettuce still. Peppermint and spearmint, these are growing really good. They're growing big. Uh, in this, this one, uh, got my oregano. I got a little sunflower here. I got my rosemary and this is where I propagated from this plant. And marigolds in here, that'll be blooming soon. And I love this planter. Look at the beauty of this. I hope to get a couple more um, of these when they go on sale, probably 4th of July. Uh, but we'll see. Shipping is outrageous these days, but we'll see. I'd love to have a couple more of these raised beds. And the lettuce, I pull from the lettuce here every day. You can see I cut it down below. Got two rows of that. Got the Swiss chard, the carrots are doing awesome. And these are the beets. And I will tell you, beet greens are really good to eat. I got two sunflowers growing there. So, that is an update on the garden. I hope you enjoyed that tour and I hope it gave you a little bit of inspiration. You could plant in the tiniest containers. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything big. I'm just doing a little at a time. And I put in this whole garden area this year. So I do a little bit every year. I can't do it all at once. Um, I wish I was, <laughs> I wish I had endless money, but I don't. And with the price of everything going up, it's just a little bit at a time. You do with what you can with what you got. And um, I love the garden. Happy stitching, everyone. Hi, everyone. It is June 28th, and I'm going to give you a garden update. I want you to see the difference in the growth. Uh, as you could see, all the daisies exploded. In the front garden, we definitely have more sunflowers growing. I got some basil there. Another sunflower is getting big. Got some roses there. This big sunflower has, it bloomed yesterday. Look at how big it is. It's so pretty. And this is the one that's hiding the bird feeder. <laughs> it's so big. This one will bloom soon. I'm going to take you to the front. Here we are by the mailbox. Look at the echinaceas really bloomed. These are all coming back now. Over in this planter, you got the zinnias blooming. And you got the sunflowers blooming. These are the lemon cello. They're all blooming now. 
on the left side. Look at, you got so many blanket flowers. There's a big sunflower in there. All the sunflowers here are getting really big. We're gonna get in closer to these. Just then there was a butterfly flying by. As you can see, that is the butterfly bush and I got a big sunflower going in there. Oh, there's the butterfly. I don't know where he's going. Down in this container, we got zinnias growing. I planted some new basil in there. Got some sunflowers. You can see they're almost fully open. Down in here, we got a sunflower growing. More basil and clove chives are in there. The Rosa Sharon is getting big. Got some zinnias growing in there, baby ones. Could see one little baby one. <laughs> Got a big sunflower here. Looks like a Christmas tree. Got a big sunflower back there. Oh, look how pretty. Look, you can see a bumblebee. Get in there close. That's on the salvia. There he goes, he's trucking around. Got more coneflowers and sunflower. Look at how beautiful. Is that not beautiful of the coneflowers? What beautiful colors. We got a couple sunflowers getting big and the big one that goes all the way up. As you can see up top 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 it bloomed the first one bloomed but this has blooms all the way down so it'll be a bunch of them on there I'm excited for that and the garden area let's take a look we got some sunflowers in the pots growing all the tomato plants are doing really well lots of flowers and as you can see in here you got lots of little tomatoes growing they're doing good Got tomatoes down in here. So that's doing really well. Over here I have more lettuce growing and it's growing good. The cucumbers are finally getting bigger. More sunflowers in that pot. Got the marigolds blooming. Marigolds are edible. And they're actually very healthy for you. Got the marigolds. Got the eggplant getting big down there. On my uh, towers, I eat all the lettuce. I eat it every day. And we got rosemary and the peppermint. Got a sunflower in there. Got a marigold. All the oregano is gonna flower soon. Rosemary. This did really well. I eat lettuce from this every day, and as you could see, I'm going to let these go to seed. Uh, but I do eat the lettuce every day. Got the Swiss chard. Carrots are doing really good, and the beets are doing good. And we got, of course, two big sunflowers going here. So I want to show you what, how fast it grows in 11, it was just 11 days. And I hope you enjoyed that little tour. It's just my little garden area. I don't have a big, huge garden, but I do add a little bit every year. As you can see, going up this way. I got my hose out, it needs water. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that garden tour and you could hear the birds singing.